Our church, basically back in the day, never did a first communion. But because people have asked for it, whatever gets you to Jesus, that's the whole point. If it gets you there and it brings your family to a place where we can worship together, that's a beautiful thing. And that's what we're all about here at First Congregational Church. Just any way to Jesus. With that being said, if you have any kind of prayer request, we'll take them now. We see that Kathy is here today. How about a nice round of applause for Kathy? And Mark is her son, and Amanda is here also. We thank God for Uncle Lou, but we also know that he is watching this service live. We have uh, Josh is here today, and Stacy is at home. She's uh, dealing with the death of her dad. And so we applaud Josh for coming. He said he needed this. He needed to be able to to sing out and praise God with his church family. So a nice round of applause for the Levi family. If you have any prayer requests, please, at any time. For your family. Family. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Got it. Amen. Yes. Amen. I talked to Christine, um, and the babies are doing well. Uh, they're all meeting their, what do they call them, milestones? or What is it, milestones? So they've all met them, and they're doing well, and the shots, something about the shots, she's waiting to get all the shots, and they'll be visiting us probably next month. So that's a, a glorious thing, that the twins are doing well, Amanda's doing well, Christina's busy as usual, but she's, she's doing her thing. I'd like to also pray for Jay and Jackie's friend. I'm not sure if all of you knew the, the man from Bayshore Fire Department. I don't really know his name, but he died just recently and they were close friends with him. So we lift his family up in prayer and we lift up Jay and Jackie and Jordan. With that being said, let us together recite the collect which will be up on the screen. Together let us pray. Lord, today we recall your faithfulness. Thank you that you walk with us every day, that you are always, always. We proclaim that your promises are true and your goodness and love never fail. In this moment, we come to you and our lives before you. May we honor, worship, and adore you with every fiber of our being. Father, we proclaim that you are the Holy One, the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. Your beauty and majesty are beyond compare. We make this prayer through your Son, Jesus. Amen. Together, let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. So we all live busy lives. Amen? We all live lives that are kind of crazy, and, and it's all over the place. And sometimes we just need to settle down. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. I don't know about you, but it's, it seems like if you have a list of things to do, you go through the list, and you're exhausted, but you forgot one thing, you beat yourself up. And God is saying, hey, relax. Stop beating yourself up. It's okay. So what we do is we want to just take some time to be in silence with God, to let God speak instead of us speaking all the time. Let's take a nice deep breath, breathe it out, and let God speak.
for all my sin Your body crucified To make me whole again I will recall the cup Poured out in sacrifice to trade the sinner's end for your new covenant. Hallelujah! I live my life in remembrance. Until at last I won my race Remind me you're not finished yet He's not finished yet Hallelujah Hallelujah. He's not finished yet Hallelujah You're not finished with me Hallelujah
morning. Our first reading today is from the first book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 23. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are one from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. These words are true and may be trusted. Primera lectura, primera de Juan, capítulo 3, versículo 16 al 23. En esto conocemos lo que es el amor, en que Jesucristo entregó su vida por nosotros. Así también nosotros debemos entregar la vida por nuestros hermanos. Si alguien que posee bienes materiales, ve que su hermano está pasando necesidad y no tiene compasión de él ¿cómo se puede decir que el amor de Dios habita en él? queridos hijos no amemos de palabra ni de labios para afuera sino con hechos y de verdad en esto sabremos que somos de la verdad y nos sentiremos seguros delante de él aunque nuestro corazón nos condene Dios es más grande que nuestro corazón y lo sabe todo. Queridos hermanos, si el corazón no nos condena y tenemos confianza delante de Dios, recibimos todo lo que, lo que pedimos porque obedecemos sus mandamientos y hacemos lo que le agrada. Y este es su mandamiento, que creamos en el nombre de, Jesús, de su Hijo Jesucristo y que nos amemos los unos a los otros, pues así lo ha dispuesto. Today we're reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in a path of righteousness. His namesake. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cups runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
gospel reading of the day comes from John chapter 10 verses 11 to 14. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not the shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves and the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father. And I will lay my life down for the sheep. This is the gospel of the Lord. Its words are true and they may be trusted. You may be seated in the house of the Lord and I'd ask the gospel choir to please come forward. Hello? Yeah. 
This time we're going to bring Tiana up, and she is our resident artist who, what she does is she illustrates the gospel in art, and you do an absolutely fabulous job. Have I ever told you you're amazing? A million times. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to draw today? Uh, I'm going to be drawing a shepherd's staff and a sheep. I like that, because it's the good shepherd. Give her an... What'd you say? I said totally. Totally. Give her a round of applause. Take a seat. So as the service is going on, you can watch the film, I mean the film, the uh, picture develop. This is a very interesting day. And the reason why it's interesting is because there's many facets to this gospel. And there's many facets to the communion that we receive here. And so I'm going to break it down very quickly because I know Kathy said she's hungry, so she told me to get him. She went like this a couple of times. So I want to make sure that you get the message and you hear it because it's so important that we dive into the Word and sustain and get some sort of contemporary wisdom from it. Amen? It's so important that we do that. So the first thing we have to do is we have to look at it in a theological academic way. Okay? In the book of John, Jesus says, I am seven times. I am the door. I am the bread of life. I'm the resurrection. I'm the, the gatekeeper. I'm the good shepherd. And a lot of times we miss the I am. If you go to Exodus 3, when Moses first asked God, and when God said to Moses, go tell everybody about me, Moses says, well, what, what's your name? And you know what God said? I am. John, in his gospel, is connecting Jesus and God. He is saying Jesus is God. Just by virtue of him saying, I am. And every time he says, I am, he's invoked. So it is, I am, meaning Anthony, pastor. Anthony, husband. Anthony, friend. He's going, I am, good shepherd. 
I am. So he's identifying all these different things about the attributes of God. Everybody go with that? So we can clear that academic stuff up. Let's go. So now here we have Jesus, and what does he say? Can we go back to the gospel? He said, I am the good shepherd. A shepherd lays down his life for a sheep. Can we go to the first reading? We know that we, uh, we know love by this, that he laid his life down for us. We ought to lay down our lives for one another. So Jesus here is not only saying, I care for you. I am your shepherd. Now, it's hard for us to relate to a shepherd. You ever see a shepherd before? Yeah. Oh, you did? <laughs> okay, you just ruined my whole concept here. Because I never saw a shepherd. You saw a shepherd? Where'd you see him? Well, not a real one, like on TV. Oh, yeah, me too, right on TV. So we don't really know what a shepherd is like. I mean, I don't. Do you know what a shepherd's like? Yeah, I, I kind of think they're kind of smelly, right? What do you think? Up in a mountain somewhere, and, and they're kind of putting all the sheep together, right? We don't really have a picture of a shepherd. And yet Jesus uses this analogy or a metaphor to say to the people of the time who knew what a shepherd was, there are two different types of shepherds. There are shepherds that care, and there are shepherds that don't care. There are shepherds that own the sheep in other words it's theirs and there are other shepherds that just work for the sheep herder or whatever they call that jesus is saying i am the good one you are mine so juan when you read a gospel like that he's not talking to all of us he's talking to you and he's saying juan you belong to me never ever forget that even when we stumble even when we fall even when we don't know what to do, Jesus is saying, just ask, I am your shepherd. Isn't that a beautiful sentiment? That this is so personal. It's not just some random reading. And for those of you that haven't been in church for a while, God is saying to you, come home. We've got answers here. The answer is me. And you've, you, you've been longing for an answer. You've been so distressed by so many things so distracted by so many things and God is saying to you I'm here ain't that beautiful I find that over the time this is what this gospel is all about that this God of ours would rather die than live without Marcus he would rather put himself to death than live without you and so what does he do? He stretches his arms wide. He dies on a cross to pay for anything that you've ever done wrong so that you can live with him. An incredible God. But there's a second part to this gospel reading. It's what it said there. This is not the gospel. This is an epistle. Go back to do, do my regular sermon one. No, no, I meant music. <laughs> go, go back to where you were. Okay, I'm getting the flow here. Keep going. That's it. And do my regular sermon. The second part is this. Is Paul, he's modeling. He's saying, the way I take care of you, take care of him. The way I take care of you, take care of her. How many of you that have somebody that you love in your life you wouldn't die for these your kids your daughters if any of these kids ever got in trouble you'd die for them why you love them that's the key my man that's the key God is saying I want you to love like I love and sometimes that's real hard because sometimes he's not so lovable is he and sometimes she's not so lovable but the bottom line is is the underline is God's love is not about how do I put this the touchy-feely stuff 
the emotional stuff. God's love is deeper than that. God's love is so deep that he says to you, I know you personally. Who needs to hear this today? Who's fallen asleep on me? Saying, oh, this doesn't have anything to do with me. God, why would God love me? Why would God care about me? Why would God even think of me with all the things that I've ever done wrong in my life? Why would God care? Because if you were the only one left, he would still go to the cross for you. We have talked and talked and talked about the realities of Jesus, that he is real, that he is real, that he was here. He is not just the historic Jesus that we make up in the storybook. He was here on earth. There is no one that will ever dispute that Jesus Christ, his name wasn't Jesus Christ, by the way, his name was Yeshua, was here. So now you got to make a decision, and I'm talking to every single one of you, so pay attention. Either Jesus was a liar, and he made stuff up, or Jesus was a crazy man, he was a lunatic or Jesus is God and what he says he means and when he says hey I love you he's not talking to the wall and I know that as I point people get a little uncomfortable so they look all, all over the place I get it but Jesus is saying he loves you and no matter what you're going through in your life right now I'm talking to you and she's looking around that he knows and he knows you and he knows you and he sure as heck knows my man Vincenzo and my man Benjamin communion now is to remember that communion is some people think it's symbolic some people think it's the real thing some people think it's elements changing you know what I don't really care what you think all I want you to know it's got to remind you how much God actually loves you. That's why we do communion. Did you know that worldwide people do communion? There are people all over the world today, right this moment, that are going to do what we're going to do. That's to say we're all seeking love. Is there anybody here not seeking love? Jesus said, if you ask, you will, I will tell you. If you seek, you shall find. And if you knock, I'm going to open a door for you. But in Revelation 20, he says, you know, I, I, I've been knocking at the door. I'm just waiting for you to open the door. Who in this room needs to open that door? I don't know. It may be none of you. Maybe all of your lives are perfect and everything is just running very beautiful. But if you're anything like me, I can't do this. I can't do it alone. I get confused, I stumble, and I fall. And when I do, I reach up, and I know I can touch the hand of the good shepherd. Can I have all the kids up here, please? All the kids, come on down. You know what I got for you today is I got blow pops for you. Okay? You know what a blow pop is? Two treats in one. <laughs> Two treats in one. You know why it's, you know why I like the blow pop? You like blow pops? Josiah? You do. Hey, you can have one. What's inside the blow pop? you know what's outside can somebody help me out what's on the outside of a blow pop candy what's on the inside candy yeah but what kind of candy, candy. What, what kind <laughs> gum right so there's two different things let me how many of you know 
that there's always one side of a story then there's another. How many of you know that? Yes? You know that sometimes you look at yourself and you go, oh, I'm not that good. But the inside is good. And sometimes the inside feels like it's all worn and you pretend. Anybody ever do that? Anybody ever feel like really icky on the inside, but on the outside you make everything okay? The Lord is saying get rid of that. And so what the Lord wants you to do, is He wants you to take one of these. You're welcome. Now, do you like that flavor? Y you do? What flavor is that? What is it? Watermelon. Can you take one and pass it down? What flavor do you like? You don't care? Do you care? No, you just like the flavor. You like that flavor? Oh, no. What is it? Never tried it. Never tried it. Okay, sometimes the Lord says, hey, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Amen? Okay, that's good. Everybody got a flavor? Okay, now, is your flavor better than her flavor? Uh, uh, no. No? Well, I. You, what do you got? Watermelon. Watermelon. Do, do you like sour? Yeah. You do? I don't. So, sometimes what the Lord is saying to you may be for her, but it might, might not be for him. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So when you read scripture, the Lord is going to read your heart. Y'all get me? Sometimes the flavors may not match, and you may not like this one, but read it anyway. I, I wouldn't, do you like sour? Yeah. You do. What am I saying to you guys? What's on the outside is beautiful, but what's on the inside is even better. The Bible says, Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. You know what that means, Anthony? Jesus is inside of you. And he wants you to share it with everybody else. It's kind of hard, right? Jesus is inside of you, Benjamin. And he wants you to share it. That means he, when somebody gets you frustrated, Jesus wants you to be at peace. Because he says, hey, peace be with you. He wants to spread that peace around. Luciana, you spread Jesus around all the time with your singing and your talent and your look at this dress look everybody isn't she beautiful today look at you oh you're looking like a little princess Luke stand up did you watch the Nick game last night yes yeah, a little bit a little bit what do you mean a little bit because my sister was watching it. your sister was watching did you see that they won yes you know what happened as I'm watching the Nick game I forgot to light the fireplace so my wife comes in my room where the, the mail then and she says uh the knicks are not playing i said no they are she said you better like that fireplace do you know i'm not playing they weren't doing too good in the first half right i lit the fireplace beginning of the third quarter and the knicks won baby right you know what i'm saying on top baby now let me explain what that means sometimes you got to do your part see god gives you everything you need but God's saying, Luke, I need you to do your part. You getting that? That means actions are better sometimes than words. Amen? Up top. So I got to make sure I light that fireplace all the time. Are you all getting my message here? Jesus is modeling. I am the good shepherd. And he's saying, so are you. Give these kids a big round of applause here. Guys, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come around over here. Let's give a blessing. Father God, I ask your blessings on everybody here. How you doing, Josiah? May they always understand that what has been given to them, they now got to give to other people. You look so happy. Here, have another one. Father God, we thank you for each of these kids. Help us all to realize that we are, they are, <laughs> not fighting the good shepherd. They're saying, I want that flavor. I want that. Go back to your seats. Give them a nice round of applause, everybody. What's the matter? What's the matter? You want another flavor? Oh, you do. Do we have another bag? Which one do you want? My point exactly. He didn't like the flavors, so he's looking for a new flavor. Okay, everybody went back to the seat there. No, this way.
in our world today. It's a me factor. It's all about me. I take a selfie. You want to see what I ate last night? Look at the way I decorated my house. It's all about me. Jesus is saying it's not about you. It's about me. And through that me, you can make an, a difference in somebody's life. You know, when I was teaching in high school, at the end of the prayer service or the chapel service, I would say this to them. I would say, I want you to think right now, and I'm going to ask you to do the same. I want you just to pick a city out. Pick any city. Everybody got a city? Sydney, what city are you thinking of? Sydney, Australia? No, what city? What city were you thinking of? London? Los Angeles. Okay. So I'm going to use you as an example. Okay. I want you to close your eyes and go to Los Angeles. I want you to see the streets of Los Angeles. And I want you to pick somebody out in that street. I want everybody to do the same. Take your city, close your eyes, go to that city. Can you all see it? Do you see an apartment complex? See a park? Maybe Madison Square Garden? And I want you to pick out one person in the scene that you have. Everybody's got a person. And I want you now to pray for that person. Maybe you say, Father God, I don't know this person, but I'm praying for the person in my imagination. I'm praying for somebody I don't know. As you pray, understand that's what it means to be church. Is when we pray for anyone, everywhere. That's what Jesus is calling us to. Sheep constantly keeps their heads down. God will guide them. He needs you to be his staff. Are you willing to do that? In Jesus' name, you are capable. You are equipped. And I pray now you go and do it. In his name. If you're taking notes, the scripture verse that will be the verse of the week, if you want to put it in your phone, is John 20, 21. As the Father has sent me, so now I send you. John 20, 21. Let that be your mantra for the week, so that in any situation you're in, remember you've been sent to that situation. With that being said, I'd ask you to please rise as we do the Apostles' Creed. This is what we believe in. It'll be up on the screen. Together, let us pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I asked you to stand so that you can stand for Christ. At this time, I'm going to ask that we begin our offering. Can I have my usher, I mean my uh, deacon, please put the two offering tables up.
And always remember that when we do an offering, it's not about the amount. It's about the worship that you put into it. The amount is cool, but it's not about that. Let us worship together, and let's begin that song. Father God, in Genesis 12, you said to Abraham, I will bless you so that you can bless others. That's exactly what our message is today. You have been blessed. You have been sent. So now be the Jesus in the world. Father, we thank you for the many blessings you give us. We thank you for the opportunities you give us to bless one another. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And our church said, Amen.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just in our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we magnify your glorious name, ever praising you, saying, Holy, Holy. You good? You good? Yep. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it after blessing it. And he gave it to the apostles saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body. The body that will be slain for you to show you, Vinny, how much I love you. So whenever you break bread with your friends, whenever you break bread with your church, remember that Jesus loves you. In the same way, In the same way he took the cup filled with wine and he gave a blessing and he said to the apostles here take this and drink this all of you for this is my blood the blood that just doesn't cover your sin it takes it away the blood that says to you you can plead me anytime and you're on my mind the blood that reminds you that Jesus would rather die than live without you, you, or you. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember how much I love you and do it in memory of me. Benjamin, this is the Holy Communion to remind you that God loves you and knows you personally. Take and eat. Vincenzo, this is the Holy Communion in which God says to you, Vincenzo, I love you. Remember me. Every time things go wrong, remember that you are loved. So take and eat. blood of the new and everlasting covenant but it really is great juice that we remember Jesus's blood that we remember that he died for you so take and drink These two fine young men a nice round of applause. And if you'd like to partake in the communion, I'd ask you to please come forward. Deacon Craig will be distributing the chalice and I will hold the plate.
the bread of life. I am the hope at night. I am the door wide open. I am the shepherd's mind. I am the truth and light. I am the way and the life. I am who I am and I am for you. Come and follow me. I am bread for the world and hope for the hopeless. Come to me and know that I'll always be there. With my arms open wide, I am who I am and I am for you. Come and follow me. I am the bread of life. I am the hope in night. I am the door wide open. I am the shepherd's mind. I am the truth and light. I am the way and the life. I am who I am and I am for you. Come and follow me. I give my heart to those in sorrow. I come to those who are in need. Hope for today and for tomorrow. A light for all the world to see. I am the bread of life. I am the hope in night. I am the door wide open. I am the truth in night. I am the way and the life. I am the way and life. I am who I am and I am for you. Come and follow me. I am who I am. And I am for you. Come and follow me. Benjamin Gianni Raphael Citron. Come on up here. This is your certificate that you've received and partake in your first communion. This is for you. Stay here. Now, I want you to know something. I got a gift for you, right? And I ordered it from Amazon. And then Amazon wrote me yesterday saying, Oh, we're sorry. We're going to be a day late. I was like, What? Benjamin's going to be so mad at me. You're not mad at me, are you? So I'll have it to you, I promise, on Thursday. Unless Amazon does some icky. Okay? You good? Right there. Stay here. Vincenzo Raphael Sintron. I also have a gift for you. And Amazon said the same thing that he said over there. So I'll have it to you Thursday. Is that good? Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for these two young men? I want you to understand that we just don't throw this out uh, they had to go through classes for this and uh, Vincenzo is now going through his confirmation um, learning he's got to do projects they got to do uh, service projects and Benjamin's been coming to the school of religion on Thursday nights religiously and I don't mean no not religiously every, every week <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing so I'm very proud of the two of you you may go sit down in the front over there
He's such a knucklehead, right? <laughs> I think I gotta walk like that. When I call your name, I want you to walk like Ben walked, and that straight foot. Like that. Every year we have a um, church council meeting. I mean, a, a church membership meeting, and we either choose or elect or keep uh, council members. This year, there has been a couple of changes, uh, and this happened at a membership meeting that we had. And I'm going to ask those people to please come forward so that we can bless you and we can approve as a, uh, as a church that we continue the mission of our church. We continue the mission that we have laid down uh, through the efforts of so many people. I remember Gil, who was tireless and just worked so hard on getting things done and believed in the mission. Today, we say uh, farewell, but not goodbye, to uh, Sandy, who was the moderator for all these years, and her foundation allows us to continue into the vision. And so we applaud her. Uh, I will tell you that we will have a, the way we uh, celebrated Gil, when he left being the moderator, we will be having a major celebration for Sandy. Even though she doesn't want it, uh, we will have a, a nice celebration in May for Sandy. At this time, I'm going to ask the following people to come forward and stand before the altar here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pronounce everybody's last name, so we'll make it as informal as possible. As our new moderator or president, Paul Margiotta, please step forward. As our retaining secretary or clerk, Helene Dennerline. As our treasurer, Maureen Erasmo. As our auditor, Marianne Marianne. As our correspondence secretary, Jackie Murray. As our budget chair, Deacon Craig Lowe. As our board of deacons, Deacon Burt. As our trustee, Joe Melito. As another trustee, Matthew Bush. As another trustee, Ann Lynch. As a member at large, Recia Bennett. A deacon, Deacon Joe. Deacon Christine. Member at large, Kathy Bernard. Member at large, posthumously, Lou Bernard. The message that was told to you today during the sermon is the message of our church. We carry the staff. We carry as shepherds. We need to bring that to one another. Are you, as the new council, willing and believing that you can be what Christ was in our world? If you are ready to take Christ into the world so that our church becomes who Christ wants it to be, says, I am and I will. Father God, I ask your blessings on everybody here. As we begin and continue the vision of bringing Jesus into the world, any which way we have to do it, help us to always remember we tell everybody to come and see. And we tell everybody any way to Jesus, just get to him. Father, I ask the blessing on all of these people as they lead our church in that direction. Amen. Do you welcome these people into our church council? Please applaud. We'll teach you the secret handshake later.
We have a very uh, elaborate fellowship. Uh, it's next, right inside over there. Uh, Christina's been working hard with everybody else. I, I, you know what's beautiful about what's going on in our church is Christina wanted this big party for her kids, and people started stepping up saying, okay, I can help. I can do this. I'll do this. I'll do that. Uh, it happens all the time here. Then that's when you know that there's a seed of love in our church family, and that's a beautiful thing. I want that to keep going. A couple of announcements. First announcement is this Saturday coming up is karaoke night. It starts at 6 o'clock, okay? Uh, you got to come with an idea of what you want to sing, okay? Make sure that what you want to sing is pleasing to the Lord. <laughs> It'll run till about 8, 9 o'clock. Concessions will be sold. It is considered a fundraiser, but it's also a fun raiser. You get it? Anyway. Bible study will continue on Thursday, uh, and there'll be a ending of our classes is this Thursday coming up, and then classes for we'll just whatever we'll we'll start them up the following September, but we'll still do things with the kids, but classes official classes end this Thursday, okay? So you'll get your report card, and uh, anybody fail? No, no. <laughs> You can't fail Jesus. So that's what's happening. Did I miss any announcements? Yes. That was spectacular. Over $1,500. Big round of applause. That's beautiful. <laughs> Yesterday, women's ministry was beautiful. Again, the spread that they put on the table with all the food, it's like she's feeding... 75,000 people, but it's, it's absolutely exquisite what she gives to the women of the church. I thank everybody for all that you do here. Our young people will be planting some of the plants. Uh, if you wanted the bulb, if you, you know, donated and you wanted one of the plants, we put them all down into the food pantry because we wanted to get it out of Fellowship Hall. But by Thursday, our kids are going to be planting on this side over here. So if you want the plant, tell me, and I'll make sure we save you a bulb. Okay, so that's happening uh, this week. With that being said, please rise as we sing our next hymn, Joyful, Joyful. final benediction. Go and live now in the faithfulness of God. Go in love with the mercy of Jesus Christ. Go with the presence of the Holy Spirit guiding your actions and your decisions. Remember, we represent the Good Shepherd. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.